Welcome back to A Closer Look. I am talking with two women here from the Bristol YWCA, <laughs> which is Kathy Waugh and Kathy Feegans. Uh, let's talk a little bit about initiatives involved in this the, the programs that you all have. Okay, thanks Duane. Um, in addition to the wonderful programs Kathy just described, we also have um, some initiatives that help us raise money and mm -hmm. create awareness and also advance and support a mission. One of those is um, Emerge Women's Professional Series. And as far as we know, this is the only women's professional development series in the region. Wow. It, uh, we founded this in 2014, and so far we have, um, have over 300 women who have attended. Um, we bring in national and regional speakers, and um, we offer this in Kingsport twice a year. And we also have, in addition to that, we offer a web-based um, development series twice a year as well. So our next live Kingsport development series will be on September 29th, and then the next web-based will be December 6th. So this gives women a chance not only for professional development, but it also enables them to network and make business connections. So um, we've gotten some tremendous positive feedback about the Emerge series. We also have another initiative called Tribute to Women. Um, the YWCA has always believed that outstanding women who have done outstanding things should be recognized. And we started Tribute to Women in 1992 to do just exactly that. And it also supports our mission, which is to eliminate racism and empower women. Uh, since 1992, we have actually honored 170 outstanding women with the tribute. And, That's amazing. Uh, it yeah. is. To keep the program unbiased, uh, we have the recipients judged by judges out of the region. So, right. um, and uh, applications for tribute to women are accepted up to uh, February 15th of each year. So. And we'll need to get in on that. That's and, right. Absolutely. absolutely. It's a wonderful program. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the third initiative that I'll mention is um, what we call listening circles. Mm -hmm. And due to the violence in our nation, um, we, we felt that there needed to be something that would provide a forum for people to come together in a safe environment to discuss the situation of race relations. And um, so we, even though listening circles are in the early stages mm -hmm. of development, we just started these in 2016. We've already brought in uh, over 65 community leaders throughout the region to um, have these discussions, create awareness, and of course support a mission. Are you finding that there is a, a, enough being talked about when you talk about race relations? That was one of the discoveries that was made um, in listening circles is, um, I don't think this was newsflash to anybody, but it was information that people just weren't feeling comfortable talking about. Right. And it did create awareness. And we have plans to um, develop this further to see what else we can do. But right now it's serving the purpose and um, we're getting requests for it all the time. So that's good. That is good. Mm -hmm. I think the more you talk about it, the more people become comfortable with it. Right. Absolutely. And they're more open about it and they can discuss it more. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Now fundraising, of course, money is always needed to keep programs like this into place. Absolutely. So what are you doing to get fundraising going mm -hmm. and, and raising money for this? Oh, well, um, we decided that we, can't, we can no longer rely on our generous donors uh, solely for funds. Mm -hmm. So we implemented what we call social enterprise mm -hmm. projects. And social enterprise basically is um, marrying the, um, the mission of a nonprofit with the market-driven business needs. Mm -hmm. And um, two of the things that we have done are the um, to raise funds for our mm -hmm. programs are the Bristol Bridal Station. I don't know, Dwayne, if you've ever heard of that. I don't think I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on our, um, our building there in Bristol. Uh, we contacted several 
sal bridal salon designers from all over the country, and they send us, never been worn, never been used, uh, previous season gowns. And these three and f four and onwards, $5,000 wedding gowns, we sell for four, five, six hundred dollars. We only have to pay shipping, so this is a, a significant fundraiser for us. It's amazing. And um, the word is gradually getting out. A lot of uh, families have said, if I only would have known about this. <laughs> <laughs> right, and sure. all the funds then go back into to our programs, right. which is, is really nice. And the other thing we took on is managing the Bristol train station. We manage the operations for the train station, a beautiful facility that was basically oh, yeah. underutilized. Now we have bookings through 2018 and beyond. So that's been um, a, a real success for us as well. So you, you're out there making strides and in, in raising funds for programs that are very necessary in our community. Yes. And folks, how can they help if they see the program mm -hmm. and say, you know, I would just like to get in there and help and do something. Well, there are several ways that that can occur. Um, we would really like to encourage people to, in their business community, in their social circles, um, spread the word. Mm -hmm. Talk about our mission, talk about our programs, and just basically become ambassadors themselves for the YWCA. So. Um, we can continue to help these children and families help themselves. The other thing they can do is call. Um, our, our number is 423-968-9444 and volunteer their time in one or more of our many programs. And then, of course, they can always donate funds to support our programs online, ywcbristol.org. So it's very easy for, for folks to get involved. And I, you're always needing volunteers, I'm sure. Yes, yes. A lot of what we do, and this helps us financially, a lot of what we do is with volunteers. So, Talk about mm -hmm. Tech Girls, um, Kathy, if you yeah. would, uh, and that program. What, what is that in I can do that. Um, Tech Girls is an after-school STEAM. That's a newer word, I guess, maybe. <laughs> uh, education program for young girls in fourth through eighth grade. And STEAM would be science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Right. That's a lot. That is. A lot to focus on there. No wonder they um, So we work, <laughs> right, and uh, so we have a focus in those areas in a safe and nurturing environment for these young ladies. These girls are referred by guidance counselors or school principal. We are licensed by the Department of Education for 35 girls and there again have a waiting list every year. We could probably double the number of girls if we had the space in that um, after school program. You know, um, it's a myth that girls aren't interested in studying science and engineering mathematics, but the truth is that boys and girls are equally interested in those um, areas, in those fields, until middle school, when for whatever reason girls start to le lose their self-confidence. So right. this program intentionally goes through those middle school years so that we can keep girls encouraged in, um, in those fields. And um, when we're talking about volunteers, it's very important that we expose them to mentors women who are working in those fields currently. So that's a lot of what we do with the program, encouraging them um, to be um, going on to their mm -hmm. secondary education, to university. or um, So those field trips and visits are a really important piece of what we do also in the with the Tech Girls program. Um, and a really interesting thing is that this year we have a, we have an all girls robotics team, and they won an award this year. So wow. that was something that was very exciting for those young yeah. ladies. <laughs> and they come in on their Saturdays to work on that team. It's uh, they have too much going on during the week, focusing on homework, nutritional snack, and then the um, exposure to these technology and mathematics and engineering lessons. So they come in on Saturdays and spend their time on Saturdays working on the Lego League team. So that was really exciting thing for the girls this year. Awesome. Now we talk about these services and the things that you provide these young girls and 
and help them to establish themselves. But I'm sure you've, you've got some success stories out there as well that you are able to talk about as far as how these people have bettered themselves. Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, I could stay here all day and we could share right. stories, but I'll share one in particular of a young lady who uh, came to us at, in uh, childcare. She was uh, probably three or four years old. Her mother was a single parent but worked in the medical field, and she, the little girl had asthma. Um, because of that, she required breathing treatments. And um, which takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, and, and um, most child care centers could not see themselves accepting her unless they paid an extra staff member, which this mother could not, the single parent could not afford. And when she came to the YW, because of the support we get from the community, we took this young child and uh, she went through um, until she went to kindergarten and started school and then when she was old enough in fourth grade to come back she came back to the YWCA in the Tech Girls program and there again she gives Tech Girls the um, and, and um, the exposure she had there the um, credit for her going into a nursing field. So now she is at ETSU. She's been through Northeast State. Awesome. She's at ETSU and um, ready to start her um, residency, I guess, in right. uh, a local hospital here. Well, we want to thank you, uh, the two Cathy's, this uh, day, yeah. and, and thank you for uh, sharing what the YWCA it has in the, and offers, and folks can get online and find out about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.